Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Amber Mine. I'm the Gaming Donut, but you can just call me Donut. And today, I'll be covering the phylogenetic tree of Jurassic Park. By now, we're all familiar with the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park. Be it the species from the park brochure, the Telltale game, or the embryos seen in the first film. But in what way are all of these species related? Phylogenetic trees are used by biologists to map out the evolution of living organisms. They determine this by comparing and contrasting the DNA of different animals. However, without DNA from extinct species, it's difficult to map out the evolution of prehistoric organisms such as the dinosaurs. Instead, paleontologists study the skeletal structures to predict how closely related two species are based on similar features. Of course, mistakes can be made, their fossils can be misleading, and can lead to scientists making inaccurate assumptions, such as the case for many prehistoric species featured in this episode, where we will be discussing the evolution of the dinosaurs of Isla Nublar, Jurassic Park. Our story begins approximately 3.7 billion years ago, when the earliest known living organisms appeared on Earth. They were simple, single-celled organisms, a precursor to all life on our planet. It wouldn't be for another 3 billion years before multicellular organisms evolved. Picture Earth 600 million years ago, during the Adiacuran period of the Precambrian, an amazing world of unusual aquatic plants dominated by arthropods and ancient jellyfish, a world unlike ours in many ways. The first reptiles evolved approximately 312 million years ago during the Moscovian Sage of the Late Carboniferous Epoch, also known as the Pennsylvanian Epoch. In many ways, the early reptiles were much like lizards today, but would quickly diverge and become some of the largest and most awe-inspiring animals the planet has ever seen. The group of reptiles known as the Archosaurs first appeared in the beginning of the Mesozoic Era, approximately 245 million years ago, in what is known as the Anisian Stage of the Middle Triassic Epoch. This group of reptiles will eventually split into the Dinosaurs and Pterosaurs, but only exists today in the form of alligators and other crocodilians. Later in the Triassic, approximately 230 million years ago, during the Carnian stage of the late Triassic, a group of archosaurs evolved into the first dinosaurs, taking the form of small bipedal omnivores. And by the end of the Triassic, they had almost completely outcompeted the previous ruling group of animals, the synapsids. 215 million years ago, the first flying archosaurs, Pterosauria, appeared. Small, bat-sized reptiles that mostly ate fish and other small prey, before eventually splitting into the pterodactyloids, which had smaller tails and a lack of teeth. The first dinosaur on our list is Herrerasaurus ishigualastensis, which appeared in the Carnian Sage of the Late Triassic approximately 230 million years ago. It was such an unusual species that many people doubted its designation as a dinosaur. It belonged to a group of dinosaurs known as theropods, which were amongst the first dinosaurs who appeared on Earth. After the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event, which killed 42% of all life on Earth, the dinosaurs became the dominant ruling species in the place of the synapsids, which had all but died out by this point. One of the earliest known Jurassic dinosaurs on our list is the double-crested Dilophosaurus weatherili, which appeared in the Cinnamurian stage of the early Jurassic 193 million years ago. Alongside the Dilophosaurus was a small Coelophysidinosaur, Segisaurus hallus. 
This small dinosaur lived alongside Dilophosaurus in the Navajo sandstone formation of Arizona. However, very little is known from his fossils, and his skull was never recorded from the single specimen unearthed in 1933. 166 million years ago, the earliest known Tyrannosaurid on our list appeared in England. Proceratosaurus bradleyi. It was originally believed to be an early ancestor to Ceratosaurus, before realizing the crest was similar to the Asian Tyrannosauroid Guanlon, making this species a part of the Tyrannosauroid superfamily, along many of its kind, such as the Eutyrannus. Not long after Proceratosaurus, the Metriacanthosaurus parkeri appears in the nearby Oxford clay formation. This moderately spined lizard belongs to a unique group of theropods related to Allosaurus, called the Allosauroid superfamily. In the Cimmeridian stage of the late Jurassic epoch, the first sauropod on our list appears in the Morrison Formation of North America. Early sauropods originally appeared in the Triassic and became the largest land animal to ever walk the earth by the end of the Jurassic. Some of the largest known sauropods belong to the Morrison, such as Diplodocus, Supersaurus, and of course, Jurassic Park's Brontosaurus excelsus. For a large part of its modern life, it was referred to as Apatosaurus, before scientists separated the excelsus and parvus species back into the Brontosaurus genus in 2015. Earlier in the Jurassic, the first Thyreophora appeared in the fossil record. These are the armored dinosaurs that include the Cretaceous Ankylosaurians, and of course, the Jurassic Stegosaurus stenops, which lived in the Morrison Formation 155 million years ago during the Cimmerigian stage of the late Jurassic. 150 million years ago, in Germany and France, the tiny scavenger Compsognathus longites appeared in the fossil record. This species is known from only two individual fossils, and was originally believed to have been related to the early bird, Archaeopteryx. The next titanic sauropod belongs to a group as the Macronaria, which had a different body shape compared to the Diplodocidae. The Giraffatitan branchi lived in Africa during the late Jurassic to early Cretaceous, and was originally believed to be a larger African species of the Morrison's Brachiosaurus, before scientists reclassified the animal throughout the late 80s to early 2000s. The Spinosaurid Baryonyx Wachiri was an important piece of the still very incomplete puzzle that is the Spinosauridae family. It lived 130 million years ago in what is now England during the Barremian Sage of the Early Cretaceous Epoch. 115 million years ago. Deinonychus hunted in the ancient floodplains of North America. At a time in Earth's history when Africa and South America hadn't yet separated, and Europe was a series of large island continents that stretched from Asia to North America. Deinonychus anterhopus is an early Cretaceous dromaeosaurid that hunted small mammals, as well as hadrosaurids and nodosaurids. For a short time in the late 1980s, a paleoartist proposed that Deinonychus be reclassified under the genus name of a smaller Asian dinosaur by the name of Velociraptor. Nearly 100 million years ago, in the great inland sea that split North America, lived a titanic 15 meter long mosasaurid known as Tylosaurus forager. The mosasaurids evolved from early Cretaceous Cinnamanian land reptiles known as Agilosaurs. These strange reptiles would split into two groups. One would turn to the ocean and become the apex ocean predator for the remainder of the Mesozoic, while the others would stay on land and become today's modern monitor lizards. Alongside the apex Tylosaurus lived a group of pterosaurs known as Pteranodontids. They appeared 88 million years ago across the coast of the Western Interior Seaway and came in a large variety of unique shapes and sizes, particularly in their crests. This particular species, the Pteranodon Sternbergi, has been the center of debate for many paleontologists since its discovery in the 1960s. Many people believe that the large crest on the top of its head justified a reclassification of this species as its own genus known as Geosternbergia, 
while others believe it should remain as a sister species to the Pteranodon longiceps. In the late Cretaceous dinosaur park formation, the duck-billed hadrosaur Parasaurolophus wakiri thrived amongst the many ceratopsians and ankylosaurids of the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous epoch. In Asia, the late Cretaceous Gallimimus belatus thrived amongst the unforgiving conditions of Nemt Basin. During its time in the Mastrician Sage, this region went through a variety of conditions, from a scorching desert to a lush marsh and dense redwood forests. Amongst the armored dinosaurs lived the Ceratopsians, which appeared in the fossil record in the late Jurassic, but thrived throughout the entire Cretaceous period. Most notably in the Mastrician Sage, the Triceratops Heridus was amongst the largest of this group. For a period of time, many considered it to be a juvenile to his cousin, the Taurosaurus, before people realized that Triceratops was actually bigger than Taurosaurus. Nearing the end of the Cretaceous, the Tyrannosaurs were the apex predators on land, and today are widely acknowledged as the most powerful land predators to ever walk the Earth. The Tyrannosaurus Rex had the most powerful jaws ever known in nature, with a bite force capable of crushing bone. It's no wonder many consider this to be the tyrant king of the dinosaurs. The end of the Cretaceous was filled with incredibly diverse life, the most common of which in the Hell Creek Formation was that of the Troodontids, primarily the Pectinodon Baccarai. This small, bird-like dinosaur thrived in the Cretaceous. Like many troodontids, it is believed to have been nocturnal. However, unlike its modern-day counterpart, it is not believed to have been venomous. That's all from me. I'd like to give a special thanks to Bob14435 for his research in writing this video. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to like, comment, or even subscribe. This lets me and the rest of the team know that you enjoyed this content, and tells us what we should do for future videos. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our Twitter and Discord for more content and to directly communicate with the team. If you wish to help out more, be sure to check out the Patreon where you can gain access to even more exclusive content. If you want to see other Jurassic style videos, be sure to check out Hammond's Legacy my own personal project where I've been solo working on a map for the past three years. And until next time guys, see ya! Hey Ember Miners, thanks for watching today's video. Be sure to click the subscribe button on your way out and click the bell icon to be notified of our videos when we upload them. Consider leaving a like on this video so we know that you enjoyed it. Leave a comment about content that you would like to see come to this channel. And be sure to check the description for links to our Discord if you would like to talk to the team more directly. Check out our Patreon if you would like to help fund the team and its upcoming projects. Remember, this is a fan group reviewing the depths of our favorite franchise, and that we are in no way affiliated with the groups and companies that own them. Be sure to support Universal Studios and Amblin Entertainment. This has been an Ambermine production. Thank you for mining with us.